Who here has actually seen clients before, maybe had a paid session or formally seen somebody? Excellent. So you might have come across those people that I'm talking about. It seems that some people, as soon as they come to your office and sit down, you can do whatever. They're ready to go and they follow along with quote unquote your instructions. But there's other people who you know just aren't following. They're either not listening, they've got questions, they're resistant, there's something going on inside of them that makes them feel uh, not as hypnotic as the rest of the subjects you work with, okay? So when it comes to conversation hypnosis, there's very many ways to look at it, okay? What I wanna look at today is language patterns. We're not gonna spend a whole day learning language patterns and learning the right format, the right sequence, where do I put this word, what's the best Ericksonian line here, how do I add confusion? Because that becomes irrelevant when we understand the principles of how language patterns work. So the premise I want to work with is start off with this question and hopefully throughout the day we get to answer it. Who's used language patterns before? Okay, for those who don't know what a language pattern is, language pattern is basically the, the, uh, the foundation of what conversation hypnosis is. It's your ability to, ability to be able to flow with language. Okay, it's your ability to say certain things that have more of a hypnotic effect or more of a confusing effect for certain things that you need to work with your client. So as hypnotists, we spend a lot of time working on our language patterns. We spend a lot of time trying to find the right words, the right lingo. We try and piece all these fabulous sentences together. Who's been stuck doing that before? Who's gone onto the internet and looked for the best language patterns? We've all done it. So my question is, why is it sometimes that these language patterns or these strategies work with some clients and not for others? Wouldn't that be worth investigating? So instead of spending hours and hours and weeks and months trying to find the best language you can have to sound all mysterious and hypnotic, why don't we work out how all language patterns work and then we can just say anything. And it has the same effect of those language patterns you put so much time and effort into trying to research. Wouldn't that be a better idea for us? So essentially what we want to do is to be able to say anything and have that have a hypnotic effect. There'd be no use for language patterns then because we wouldn't need them because we understand the principles of it. Does that make sense so far? So what I want us to do in our groups and during this group little exercise, just move your stuff to the side. Please be careful when you're walking around. In groups of, let's say, four or five, six I'm happy with, as long as you're not talking to yourself, we're good. I want you to discuss that question. Why is it that language patterns work with some people and why do they fail miserably with other people? Has anyone had that experience before? You get a client in and it's what, you just look at this client and they're in trance. And everything you say just comes out so perfectly. The formation's correct, you're getting unconscious moments and you're thinking, oh my God, this is brilliant. I'm fantastic at this, I'm on fire. Client leaves having a wonderful experience. Then your next client comes in, you say the very same things and they look at you and go, nope, not working. So what do you do? You try harder. You dig deeper into your language bag. You pull out all these fancy patterns. You look at it more intently. You might do some uh, hypnotic tricks with them. And the more you try, the more resistant they come. And you're sitting there with someone who now has lost uh, faith in hypnosis. And you as a hypnotist are sitting there sweating, wondering what the hell just happened? Why isn't this person going into trance? When my last person, I couldn't keep them out of it. Has anyone had that experience before? So we're going to investigate this today and I want to show you how to get around that every time. Okay, so in your groups of fours, fives, sixes if you will, let's come up with some assumptions of why we think this happens. Why is this a common phenomenon? Okay, not just in this group, I would say in the whole industry as well. So let's spend a couple of minutes doing this and let's see what we come up with. Oh yes, all right, so. Essentially what I want to do from that little chat is work out what are our thoughts around language patterns because we understand where we all are as a group, we can destroy the biggest mistakes you're making and also that I made when I was very young. Okay. So why is it that some of our language patterns stick and have a hypnotic effect, which is the goal of a language pattern, and why do some fail miserably? What are our thoughts? What do we think? I reckon um, you'd be okay. 
if you haven't matched and uh, got rapport properly, you'll, yes. you could be speaking to them in a kin setting where yep. they're an auditory. Excellent. And that's where it comes unstuck. Mm -hmm. you're not, you haven't matched their language. Yep, so when you're not matching their reality, if they're more visual, you're not visual. Absolutely, who would agree with that? Yeah, 100%. Anyone else? Yes? Oh, from the client or you? Everything. Thank you. Yeah. What are you going to do to me? Who's had a client like that before? That's been shaking, scared, just even entering your office. Who wouldn't even look at you? You ever had those clients before? If you haven't, expect them. The more clients you get, the more of these, I shouldn't say weird because it's the wrong word, different type of clients going to come and see you and that's what you should be prepared for. Okay? So we got fear, we got different reality matching. What else? Yes. Yeah. Thing. That's me. That's who makes me. So the leverage and motivation is not there. Okay. Yes, Greg. Rapport. Yep. Rapport. In what way? Give me a bit more on that. Um, what way would you use rapport? Being a therapist, what what way do you go about it? Oh, well, there's multiple levels. Um, but, but you know, first having a little small small talk. Sure. Just you know, helping them feel comfortable. Yes. Uh, explaining to a degree hypnosis and mm -hmm. and letting them know that they're safe, that you know everything's okay. And just, sure. And, and like what uh, John and they were saying, just kind of um, using back, using um, mirror matching and that sure. sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. Would you agree? Hopefully, I can add to this. Um, jumping in too quick. Yeah. Clients come in and you go automatic hypnotic. You look at people, and you get all weird and crazy. They're not ready for that, especially if they're scared or there's no rapport. You become too hypnotic too quickly. Who wouldn't resist? Has anyone met, maybe in a social circle or social gathering, someone really, really out there? Never met this person before, but the subjects they talk about or the way they uh, talk about themselves or the way they view the world is so left field from what you view. Has anyone met one of those people before? And what do you feel about that person? Well, they're a bit strange. They're a bit weird. And they're very hard to connect with, right? So we've got to look at this as well. Hypnosis is supposed to be a little bit unusual and weird, especially when we put our, uh, our hypnotic attitude into it. And if we do that too quickly, of course our client's going to push away and they've got every right to because we've been doing it our whole life with those weird people as well. Okay, what else do we think? These are, these are great ideas. What else? I was thinking in the respect of before is the energetics between the two of you. Sure. You feel that there's a resisting and you're staying in a state of, of being with them and, and being present. Yeah. And not resisting their resistance. Beautiful. So working with the resistance rather than pushing it away. Yeah. Excellent. This is a great point. As therapists, we can fall into that trap of saying, well, they're resistant. I'm going to blame them. It's their fault. Maybe they don't want the change. But we've got to think. Resistance. What is resistance? Our clients come in, they're ready to change. We can see that in them and all of a sudden they're resistant. We've got to start to think, is it me doing it? Am I making them uncomfortable? Have I not got the rapport? Am I matching them in an inappropriate way? Have I said something that's offended them? We've got to think, whatever's happening to them, it could be inside of us as well. Take Chris's point, it could be our own fear that is being suggested to them unconsciously, that becomes their new suggestion, and now you've got these two fearful people trying to work on something. It doesn't work quite well. Okay, let's get one more idea, if we've got one. Yes? So persisting with the technique that just isn't aligning. Excellent. Persisting with a technique that is not aligned to them. Okay. In the industry, there's a lot of techniques that say this is the best for smoking, this is the best for weight loss, this is the best technique for this, this and this. And they have a lot of validity and it's a great place to start and it's a great way to learn your craft. But what do we do when it doesn't? If your technique that you've put all this time and effort into memorising or learning, what happens when that stops working? What are we left with? Failure, right? Now a client might know this, might not know this, but we sure as hell do. What do we tend to fear when we failed in something? We start to feel it, right? Like, oh damn, I just screwed up. And that gets portrayed unconsciously as well. So there's all these different mannerisms. So to collect all those together, we've got to think of rapport. We've got to think of matching and mirroring. I heard in one of the groups someone talk about matching breathing. Okay, that's an old Ericksonian trick. Got to find the right technique that works for my client. I've got to work on my fear and hopefully that I'm confident in what I'm doing. Who thinks that sounds like a lot of work? Okay, that's a lot of work trying to make rapport. It's a lot of work trying to match and mirror. 
okay? There's a lot of effort getting put into something that can be a lot easier for us. Does that make sense? So in order to do this, let's break this down. Let's look at this. Language, patterns. What is a language pattern? Just so we all get a, a group understanding. Yep. Combining words in which way to create hypnotic forms. Excellent. So just putting words together, that'll hopefully have a hypnotic effect or create some sort of hypnotic phenomena. It's a hypnosis, it's a hypnotic uh, lingo, if you will. It's learning to flow with language without umming and ahhing and putting ideas together. Everyone cool with that? Okay. There's two types of language patterns I want to work with. Like I said, we're not going to go through a whole list of this is the best language pattern to use. You need to put this word here and that word here because it becomes irrelevant. Okay. What is the goal of a language pattern? Change. Change. Yep, create change. What else? To create a response in a client. To create a response in a client. What's create confusion? What's our ultimate goal with a language pattern? Yep. Get rid of the conscious mind. Yeah. Put them into trance. What else does a language pattern do other than that? Regardless of what trance looks like, whether it's a form of confusion, an Ericksonian approach, for those who went to the spotting unconscious moment seminar, could be that approach. At the end of the day, what's the only goal? Trance or hypnosis. So, to make this a little bit easier, for those who haven't been to a seminar before I'll follow this process, I just want to look at hypnosis and there's four steps that regardless of what technique, what strategy you use, what type of approach, whatever the label is called that you've practiced with, all hypnosis has to go through in some form, there's four steps, A, B, S, U. Who's familiar with that four step acronym? Okay, excellent. So if you're not, if you have been, who, who has been hypnotized before, formally or informally? Yep, excellent. In order for this quote unquote hypnosis to, to have a reaction or for you to feel like you've been hypnotized, your hypnotist, whether they knew it or not, had to have applied, usually these three, this four is just a bonus if you will, these three to put you into trance, okay? Your hypnotist had to get your attention. They had to bypass, I'll put the C mind, which is the conscious mind, and they had to stimulate the unconscious mind. Would everyone agree with that? Whether your client got your attention by looking in your eyes, telling you a story, getting rapport, it had to have functioned through this. In order for you to feel hypnosis, this had to have happened. That had to have bypassed your conscious mind. It's that conscious mind in you or your clients that says, hypnosis isn't real. I can't be hypnotized, this is rubbish. Who's heard that before? Yes. That's that part of the mind talking. In order for you to get some sort of hypnotic phenomena, i.e. your client's eyes closed automatically, they relaxed really deeply, maybe one of their arms lifted up by themselves, they felt confused, their breathing went shallow, went heavier. In order for that to happen, there had to be some sort of, sort of stimulation of the unconscious mind, because that's where trance exists. Does that make sense so far? This we'll look at a little bit later, this is just utilize. We'll look at that very soon. But these are the three. So if you've been hypnotized before, this would have had to have happened in some form, okay? So if our goal with our language pattern is to get trance, what else could we use a language pattern for? There's two categories, trance, what else might we use a language pattern for? Connection. Connection, yep, so it might be a rapport. What else? Change. Yep, change, let's call it therapeutic. You've got language patterns that induct a trance, do we not? And you've also got language patterns that might create some sort of therapeutic outcome. There's only two. So to make your language patterns easier, when we're working with clients, we need to figure out 
where inside of this interaction or this intervention are they? If a client is not in trance, should we use a therapy language pattern? Who would agree yes? This is where people either do this. We could combine them. Yeah, we could definitely could combine them. Who would feel that if your client's in trance, you could then go out and do some therapy? Hands up, folks, so I can see. My eyesight's not that good. Excellent. So, how do we know if a client's in trance? They're open to, to working with you. Yep, that'll be definitely a part of it. Skin tone. Skin tone, yep. Flickering of eyes. Mm -hmm. Who's familiar with this? Probably sick of hearing about this. Unconscious moments. For those who are familiar with it, what does an unconscious moment tell us? It's working. The rest of you that have been, stiffy gets torn up. I need your... But it's working. So what is an unconscious moment? Skin tone coloration, flickering the eyes. So skin, breathing. Lost in thought. Yep, so uh, can we put that like focus? Yep. Yeah, happy with that. There was one over here. Eye movement. Eye movement. Yeah, their wrist is uh, limp. Their arms are limp. Yep. So it could be either limp or cataleptic. Yeah. So emotions. We saw a lot of those at the unconscious moment seminar. Clear indications. So an unconscious moment is a pure expression. Write this down. Is a pure expression of the unconscious mind. So, if you've got your favourite language pattern, and we'll make a bigger list of these, if you've got your favourite language pattern and you get no unconscious response, what does that tell you about the language pattern? It's not for them, or there's other things you need to include in it. If you do see any of these we'll add to this list, it means you're on the right track. So what other unconscious phenomena, unconscious moments, are we likely to see or even hear from our clients? So we get a clear list, because you're all going to play with this very soon, I want you to monitor these. What else? An ab reaction. Yep, so it could be an ab reaction. An ab reaction is a negative reaction to trance. A very disturbing negative reaction. Okay, we'll talk about more later. Um, that deals with more the safety side of things, but we'll look at that later, but that's a good one. Yep. Take a deep breath while you're breathing there. They can move their body. Yep. So uh, posture. What else? Confusion. Confusion, yeah. For those that have seen clients, have you ever asked a client a seemingly ordinary question that they cannot answer? And they do this. Well, it's sort of like, it's, you know, I can feel it, but it's not, it's like, and they struggle to even answer the question, who's had that phenomena before? That is the unconscious mind kicking in because you've bypassed that conscious reaction, which is all your client's excuses about why they can't quit or why they can't do this in life. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of confusion. What else? Sighing. Sighing, yeah. else, the more the better we get up here, so you can monitor them. Ums and ahs, yeah, that comes into confusion. What laughing, we've had people, I've seen people laughing. Yeah, hysterically. And you ask your client, what are you laughing about? And they're like, I don't know. But it comes out naturally. That's, uh, that's a big, well, it could be part of emotions. That's a big unconscious moment. What else? Yeah, falling asleep, that could be the opposite, but we've got to touch on that anyway. It is common. Well, I had one client open their eyes while they were in trance. Yeah, it's natural. And put it back into trance. Yep. Uh, the question you should be asking is, did they actually come out? No, they didn't. No. Uh, there's a big myth around eye closure or eye opening with hypnosis, regardless of what you do, conversational, clinical, whatever. As long as you're seeing these, the eyes can be wide open. For those who've been enough of our seminars, you've seen that dozens of times. It looks quite bizarre, but they're getting all the unconscious responses even with the eyes open. Okay? 
So we'll leave that up there for now because we're going to get into our first exercise. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is break up again, swap sides can go into sides, not boy versus girl. Let's get into groups of four or five. 